Lesson 7.5, divide by 4. We can divide by 4 using the strategies make an array, make equal groups with counters, use factors of 4 as 2 and 2, or we can use related multiplication facts. The divisor can represent the number of equal groups or how many are in each group. We have 6 divided by 2. We have two equal groups. Our quotient is 3. There's 3 in each group. Or it could represent how many are in each group. We have 6 divided into 3 in each group. We have two groups. Lisa baked 12 chocolate chip cookies. She put the cookie dough into four rows on the pan. How many cookies were in each row? And we can make an array to solve problems like this. We know there are four rows, it told us. We take turns drawing one counter in each row until we get up to 12. We have four rows, one, two, three, four. We need to go up to 12 for our counters. So we have four counters and we take turns putting them in each row. That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We've got three in each row. We put three counters in each row, so there are three cookies in each row. We can write it as a number sentence like this, or we can write it with a division bracket like this. Either way, we read 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. We can also solve the problem by making equal groups. We know there are four rows, so we draw four circles. We draw counters one at a time into each group until we have drawn 12 in all. And each circle will represent a row. So we need to make 12 in all. We take turns putting one in each group. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. We can see that we put three in each group. That means 12 divided by four is equal to three. Just remember to take turns putting them into the circles or the groups so that you put an equal amount into each group. We can divide by four using factors of four. Four can be broken into two times two. Two and two are factors of four. I'm going to divide by two twice. Dividing by two twice is the same as dividing by four. We have 12 divided by four is equal to n. We have n as a variable. We do 12 divided by two, which is equal to six. Then we divide by two again using the six. Six divided by two is equal to three. That means 12 divided by four is equal to three. We know n is equal to three. That's our quotient. So remember a variable is a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown amount. Six times n equals 12. We know n is equal to two because six times two is equal to 12. It's no different than if we had a blank space here. We just use a letter of the alphabet to take the place of the blank space or the unknown number. Related facts use the same three numbers. And we can use a related multiplication fact to do 12 divided by 4. We think 4 times n is equal to 12. And 4 times 3 is equal to 12. So we know this n is equal to 3. So 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3, or we can write it with the division bracket like this. 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. So here's another example of using the factors. 
we can use factors of 4 to find 24 divided by 4. We have 24 divided by 4. The 4 can be broken into a 2 and a 2. We divide by 2, 24 divided by 2, that's equal to 12. Then we divide the quotient by 2. 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6. That means 24 divided by 4 is equal to 6. And the strategy using factors only works when the divisor is 4 or the divisor is a number that has two factors that are both larger than 1. So the strategy using factors, we have to have two factors that are both larger than 1. So if we look at 15 divided by 3, the factors for 3 are a 3 and a 1. Well, this won't work. Both factors for 3 are not larger than 1. We have a 1 here. So that won't work. We can't use factors. For 30 divided by 10, the 10 can be split up into a 2 and a 5, 2 times 5. This will work because both factors for 10 are larger than 1. And yes, 10 and 1 are factors of 10, but so are 2 and 5, or 5 and 2. So we choose this one, see? 30 divided by 5, this won't work using factors because both factors for 5 are not larger than 1. We have a 1 here. So they have to be larger than 1, like here, okay? Many flowering bulbs need to be planted in the fall, and they'll grow in bloom in the next spring. Some actually will bloom in the winter. Lisa planted lilies in four equal rows. Emma planted tulips in three equal rows. Who planted more bulbs in each row and how many more? So let's take a look at our frequency table first. It's flower bulbs planted. We've got the type tulip. There were 24 planted. Type lily. There were 24 planted also and daffodils, there were 20 planted. We know Lisa planted lilies, that's 24, and Emma planted tulips, that's also 24, but they did it in a different number of equal rows. So the first thing we need to do is divide to find how many in each row for each person. Lisa, there were 24, and she did it in four rows. That's equal to six in each row. Emma also planted 24, but she did it in three equal rows. That's eight in each row. So Emma planted more in each row. We use subtraction to find how many more. Eight in each row, six in each row. Eight minus six is equal to two more in each row that Emma planted. Now, they both planted 24, but Emma planted fewer rows. So she had more in each row. She had to split up her 24 into less rows, so she had to put more in each row. So we can divide by 4 by making an array, by making equal groups with counters. We can use related multiplication facts, but we can also use factors of 4 as 2 and 2. When we use the factors of 4 as 2 and 2, we have to divide by 2 twice. We're going to talk about dividing by 6 in our next lesson, and keep trying. I'm really proud of you for watching these videos, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.